What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Fusion Beginner tutorial for you. So in yesterday's video we talked about how to get started creating 3D shapes inside of Fusion 360. In this video I wanted to talk through probably 10 of the most important solid creation tools that you need to know and understand inside of Fusion 360. So when you watch this video, if there's something you'd like more information on, leave a comment down below. Um, I'd like to make some more specific specific videos about each one of these tools, but this should give you a good overview of how to start creating different kinds of shapes inside of Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so if you remember, all of these tools that we're dealing with here are going to be found inside of the solid tool set. So this tool set can be found inside of the design workspace um, under the tab for solid. And most of these, if you click on this button for create, you can see more tools. Most of these are going to work with sketches that you create. So two dimensional sketches. And so if you want to learn how to create those two dimensional sketches, you can check out the video from yesterday. I'm going to link it up in the upper right hand corner here somewhere. So the first tool I want to talk about is probably the simplest, but it's the one that you're going to use a lot of, and that's going to be the extreme extrude tool. So what the extrude tool does is it takes a face and it creates a copy of it and then it also creates infill geometry behind that shape. So if I was to click on the extrude tool for example and then select this face and click and drag this arrow, what this does is this takes this face it makes a copy of it and then it infills these lines in order to make a solid shape. So you can see how this works with any kind of two dimensional sketch that's closed. So it does need to be a closed face, but you can see how I can create like a cylinder by extruding a circle, or I can also, we need to turn our sketches back on. I can also extrude abnormal shapes like this one. So this operates both by either creating a new body or also intersecting or cutting with other bodies that the objects intersect with. You can also set taper angles and things like that. But this is going to be probably the simplest tool, but also the one you're probably going to use the most when working inside of Fusion 360. So now let's talk a little bit about the revolve function. So the revolve function is going to be a tool that you're going to use in order to revolve a shape in a circle. So you can find that by clicking, um, it's actually right here under revolve. Um, you can also find it by clicking the drop down um, under create. But basically what this tool is going to do is this is going to take a profile and it's going to rotate it around a selected axis. So all you would do is you would activate this tool and you can see how it gives you two options in here. You need to select the profile, which is the shape that you're going to revolve, and then you need to select you need to select the axis that it's going to rotate around. So, um, for example, if I was to click on select here, if I was to click on this axis right here, if I was to make this my center point, you can see how what that's going to do is that's going to revolve this shape 360 degrees. And so you can set this to either do a full revolution or you can also set it by angle. So if you do it by angle, you can set this so that it only partially revolves an object. So you can use this to revolve things in a circle. And so you can either use this to revolve this object around itself or if you had a point that was a little further away, so if we were to activate the revolve tool and set our axis as something like the center axis here, and I was to click on this blue option, you can see how this would give me a much larger extrusion because it would revolve it around this other axis. So depending on the kind of shape you want to create, there's a lot of different things you can do with this. So, and you're going to get different results just by specifying a different axis. So one more time, if I was to run this and I was to set my axis as this point, you can see how that's going to give me a completely different shape again. So this tool is going to be very helpful for revolving objects and kind of lathing profiles into 3D. So the third tool is the sweep function. And what the sweep function is going to do is it's going to take a profile and it's going to allow you to extrude it along a path. So the way that works is if you were to click on the button for sweep, you can see how if I click on this, it's going to ask me for a profile and also a path. So in this situation, I want my profile to be right here, and then my path can be these different edges. And so when I select that, that's going to extrude the shape along that path. And you can set how far along this, or how far along this path this extrudes by dragging the arrow, or you can just uh, let this go all the way along the length of the path. And so you can also set things like taper angles. So like for example, if I wanted this to get wider, 
on the other end or something like that, I could set a taper angle to something like three degrees. And you can see how um, when you set this taper, this is gonna get bigger on the other side. So you can kind of adjust that depending on what you want this to do. So for other shapes, you can set them to twist as well. I don't wanna to talk too much about that in this video. There's also options in here to use a path and a guide rail and a path and a guide surface. We will talk about those in a future video. Um, but the other thing you can do with this, and note that for all of these, they come with the option, um, or most of these, they come with the option not only to create a new body, but also to remove material. We'll get more into that in the future as well. But um, if we were to do something like create a sweep with this profile along this path, notice that this will actually close in on this corner here so you get a smooth, uninterrupted face. So if I was to rotate under, you can see that a little bit better. But if you were to extrude something along a closed path like this, this is automatically gonna heal your face in so this remains a solid. So this is really good for anything that has a path associated with it. So the loft tool, is an interesting tool. It's designed to actually create faces based on different profiles. So basically what it's designed to do, and this is the first one where we've had to click inside the create menu um, in order to find it. But basically what it does is it takes different shapes and then it creates a face based on those shapes. So for example, if I was to take this set of shapes and I was to add profiles, I could click on this, this, and this, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna try to create a skin across all of these that kind of transitions between these different shapes. And you can adjust um, you can adjust the shape a little bit based on some of the options down below. Um, but this is something that's really good for organic type modeling or something where you really need something to just kind of transition between different shapes. And uh, we'll talk about some more interesting ways to use that in the future. Um, one of those ways though is there is an option to add a path when you use the loft tool. So if I go into create and I click on loft, you can add a profile or a pair of profiles. So in this case, I could add a square and a, uh, and a circle. And you can see how at the moment, this isn't working very well because these are in a straight line, right? So it's trying to generate a face um, across both of these objects. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna add a rail. And so what the rail is going to do is that's gonna tell this, okay, we want you to generate this shape, but we want it to do it along this path that we dictate. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to a guide type of center line, and then we're going to add a path. And so when we add a path or a rail, what this is doing is this is telling Fusion 360, okay, we want you to do this transition between these shapes, but we want you to do it along this path right here. And so what this does is this allows you to create much more complex shapes than you could model um, by hand really quickly. So if I click the OK button, you can see how we've got this interesting shape that transitions from a square to a circle nice and smoothly. So now let's talk a bit about the rectangular pattern tool. What the rectangular pattern tool is going to do is it's gonna give you the ability to create patterns or duplicates of different objects. So there's a couple ways that this works. So the first way that this works is you can use it inside of the sketch mode. So if we were to right click on this and edit our sketch, we could select this object or this sketch. And under the create option, there's an option down here for rectangular pattern. So this actually shows up inside of your sketch tool set. So if we were to click on this, it's gonna ask us to do a couple different things. It's gonna ask us to select an object that we want it to copy. And it also wants us to give it a direction. So in this situation, for example, um, if I wanted to create copies in this direction, we would click and drag this arrow in that direction. And now it knows, okay, this is where we want you to go. And you can type in a value. So let's say I wanted this to go 500 millimeters or something like that. You can do that really easily. So now I've got a copy here and also a copy here. And you can dictate the number of copies um, either by typing a value in here, clicking the up arrow, or also by clicking and dragging this little tool right here. So you can see how you can use this little tool in order to add or remove objects in here. So, and you can also do this in multiple different directions. So for example, 
you could come into this second distance or you could come into this distance option right here and you can set a value of let's say we wanted a value of 30 millimeters. You could type in a value of 30 in here and you can see how what that does is that gives you a set of copies to the right based on this quantity right here. So you can set not only the number of copies that you can create this way, but also this way. So, and the same thing applies. So you can add different, uh, different numbers of these, either using the slider or by typing values in here. There's some other things in here as well, like making this symmetrical. But basically what you can do is you can use this to create these patterns in really whatever layout you'd like, as long as it's rectangular. And so not only does this tool work, and we'll go ahead and click on finish sketch, but not only does this tool work on sketches, it also works on bodies. So if I was to extrude this one sketch into a body right here, so you can see how now we're out of a uh, sketch mode. The sketch has been turned off and uh, you can still see this body in here, but you can click on this button right here for rectangular pattern and you can do the same thing. And so you can do this for faces, bodies, or features. So the features one is really interesting. I wanna do a video about that in the future. In this case, we're just going to worry about bodies. So I'm just gonna type in a quick value right here. And so it's going to ask us to select a direction. Usually you end up going back to the origin in order to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and click on this green axis. Then I'm going to click and drag this out. And you can see how I can create copies of 3D bodies as well as 2D sketches. So it works pretty much the same way. So there's a few different things about this. But this is very functional for both sketches and for bodies that have been made in 3D. So there's also an option under Create. Um, for circular patterns. So if you wanted to create a pattern along a radius instead of along a line, you could select this tool. Select bodies, and we could select this object, and then it's gonna ask us for the axis that we wanna rotate this around. In this situation, because I don't have an axis over here, and I don't wanna do it around the middle, um, we'll just go ahead and put it around this object. We'll make that the center. And uh, what you can do is you can create as many copies as you'd like around a central point. So you can see how I can use this to create a number of different copies in here. And you can set that where it's either going to be full or you can set it along an angle. So if you wanted this to only be 180 degrees um, from this point or around this point, you can do that as well. <clears throat> The hole tool is going to be really useful for punching holes in objects. So for example, if you wanted to punch a hole inside of this cylinder, you can do that. And you can dictate all of the different things like your hole diameter. But the really interesting thing about this is you also have the ability to do like countersink or counter bore holes. So if you're doing a certain kind of screw, for example, um, you could use this in order to um, set it so a certain screw fits in here. And you can even do that to the point where you can set this so that it's a tapped hole. So, and you can set the size of the tap, so the thread types and other things like that. So this is really good if you have an actual dictated screw type or something like that that's gonna go inside of an object. This does a really good job of punching that hole in here. So you can see how you can add those holes really easily and you can set the depth that this, um, that this penetrates inside of this object as well. So this uh, I, I think has a bunch of really interesting applications. I'm really excited to kind of dive into that one. And so you can see how if we were to try to punch a hole through the middle of this, we could click and drag this all the way through so we could create a complete hole through this object. So in addition to having the option to punch holes in objects, you also have the option to thread objects. So let's say you wanted to create some kind of a model where you were incorporating bolts or other hardware. There's an option in here to create threads. And so you can see how you can use this to thread the outside face of an object. So you could draw a cylinder that's going to be the, uh, that's going to be the size of a certain bolt. 
and then you could add threading to the outside of it. And you can see how there's a number of different um, thread types in here. So you can actually set this up so this corresponds with a real life thread type. Um, and so you could use this to thread this and create different bolts and different hardware. So this, this one's really interesting to me. So depending on the kind of modeling you're doing, this may or may not be helpful. So I find this one really interesting. So another interesting function that's contained inside of Fusion 360 is there's a built-in library of solids. So different kinds of solids that are already in here. So you don't necessarily have to build those. So for example, if I was to click on the box, this will bring in a box shape. So instead of you having to go through the sketch function, you can just use this in order to bring these in. And that gets more useful when you start creating things like a sphere. So you can see how this sphere, for example, you can just bring this in and you can just kind of adjust it. So if you need a sphere inside of your model, um, it's just there and ready to go. You can also combine these to create different solid effects. So for example, I could draw this sphere in here in order to cut out a piece of a sphere from this box using the cut function. So and there's some other kind of fun ones in here as well. I really enjoy the coil. So the coil allows you to set a radius and it'll actually model out a coil of an object and then you can move this in and out. You can also set the number of coils that are contained inside of that so you can model like different springs or those things and you can also taper these in and out using the degree function right here. So if you ever just need ready-made shapes there's a number of those built into the solids as well. And then finally, I want to talk a little bit about the mirror tool. So what the mirror tool is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to mirror different objects um, so be that faces or bodies or features across a plane. So like for example, if I wanted to, I could take this box, I could select it, and then I could mirror it across this face in order to create a copy of that object. So we could take this whole thing then and then do the same thing. So we could select it, mirror it, and we'll call this bodies as well. You could set a mirror plane on the back side here. Click OK. You can see how you can take uh, different tapered, you can take different shapes and you can mirror them across planes to create symmetrical objects. So we'll do a bunch of that when we start uh, cutting out different things and stuff like that. So for example, let's say that we wanted this to be cut out on the top as well as the bottom. So we can do a mirror, select features, And then we could set our mirror plane. And probably what we'd want to do is we'd want to add a mid plane on this object as a construction plane. We'll talk more about that in the future. But we could mirror this across a mirror plane. And you can see how that feature gets added to the top of this object. So there's a lot of different things you can do with that mirror function once you understand the way that it works and what it does. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Um, I know it got a little bit long, but I wanted to give you kind of an overview of some of the different functions that are contained inside the solids so you know what's there and how you can start using those. We'll get into all of these in depth in future videos, but if there's something you'd like to see more about, leave a comment below and let me know. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.